Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hey, bro, come here. You need to repent. You look like you need to get... get... No, 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 no. I understand. I just said... Hey, bro. Brother, come here. Knowing you an Israelite is not good enough. Our people know a lot of things about themselves, but we, we are missing the key point that we need to repent. We need to repent. That we need to keep God's laws. So, are you keeping God's laws? Let me get the law on that. Your body is the temple. Because right now, you're not only destroying yourself, you're destroying the nation, and the next generation is coming after you. Because you know what? You are an elder in the community. So when your little kids see you, they see an example. And by you destroying your lungs, you're destroying the next generation coming after you. So you better repent, because not only are you gonna die, but your children are gonna die, and your grandchildren are gonna die. And you are the cause of the downfall of the black community. So come take responsibility. Listen to the law. Of First Corinthians chapter three verse six. You talked enough for forty-five years. Come listen to the laws of God. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? You mad because we're telling you that you're the temple of God and you need to stop destroying your body? Good. You threw the cigarette out. All praises for repentance because the Lord just changed your heart and convicted you. But guess what? The next challenge is not picking it back up. The next challenge is not lighting another one. The next challenge is not going right back to the gas station and buying another pack. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah, yeah. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Brother, our position on this earth is higher than what we can comprehend. The Lord says this body that we have right. is his temple. That's right. And we are not to destroy it. Why? Because we are the sons of God. But yet we're living as slaves up in here. Right. Yet we're living as the degenerates of the world. Right. Why is that? Why is that? Because we sin against an almighty God. Let me show you something, brother. You bought that today, right? Yeah. Let me show you a law that we must keep. Because the other day, let me get a, uh, let me get um. Nehemiah 1031. But let me show you something. Matter of fact, let me get the creation of the Sabbath day in the book of Genesis. But let me show you something, brother. The other day, people were saying, let's boycott these businesses on July 7th, right? Because they understood that an economic downfall would cripple or at least make this nation stumble, right? But guess what? God told us to do that thing every week. Every week. And not only did he, he it wasn't a recommendation, it was a commandment. Right, let me show you when that commandment was established. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. So hold on. The, this is coming straight from the mouth of the one who created and formed the sun, who created and formed the moon, who created and formed the land that you are standing on, and created the body that you're living in. So this is coming straight from the source, not from our mouth. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. What day was the seventh day? If, my, if Sunday was the first day of the week, what is the seventh day? Saturday. From Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Because the day starts at sundown. That's when the new day starts. So from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is the seventh day. Right. Which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work. Which
which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Meaning made it different than all the other days. This particular day is separated from the other days. Right. And we're going to show you how we are to act in the separation of this day. Bring it out. Because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Let me get Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. So it's certain things we are to do and it's certain things we are not to do on this holy day. You understand? Because again, I could look at you and I tell you a brother who seek knowledge. Am I right or am I wrong? You right. Thank you. So now, in this, you already know, in this journey of seeking knowledge, it's a consistent journey. And when you increase in knowledge, you will increase your life, right? And you will know more tomorrow than you knew yesterday, right? So guess what? If you find out something today that you didn't know before, the only option is to change and do better, right? Let me show you something. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, verse 31. Bring it out. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals. So hold on, the people of the land that you live in is all these, look, White Castle, McDonald's, uh, was a wine and spirit, Subway. They're where they're bringing wear and victual, meaning goods and services. Right. right? Watch this. On the Sabbath day. Today is the Sabbath day. So they're still open. Look at that. It's a line of cars right there. They're no. selling on the Sabbath day. Bring it out. To sell the wheat would not buy it of them. The wheat is talking about the children of Israel. God's chosen people. Right. The people above all. Who gives a damn what the other nations are doing? You are the son of God. That's so right. you are supposed to live your life different. So guess what? On the seventh day, be like, no, we don't buy it because God rested on the seventh day and I am his son. Bring so therefore out. I rest from working, buying, and selling. Why? Because we are living our lives according to the most high. That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or by, excuse me, or on the holy day and that we would leave the seventh care and the exaction of every day. Make it Judas 5 and 20. But now you're thinking to yourself like, man, I just bought a little drink. What's the point? What's the purpose? You got to understand, when we align ourselves back with the laws of God, the other nations can't touch us. Right. The, you, see, uh, you see how we getting shot? Let me ask you. We stronger. We faster. We smarter. We better in every aspect. Bring it up. How are we getting shot down in the street? How are we being easily defeated by nations that we're better than? Right. How is that happening? Right. Why? Because we severed our connection from the power. And that power is the most high. And I'm going to show you an example of the other nations knowing this. Let me show you. It's a reason why they open up those shops in the black neighborhood and are purposely open on the Sabbath day in order to keep you in sin. Because if you ever return back to your power, which is the most high, you would easily overcome the nations that oppress you. Let's see what this says in the book of Judah, chapter 5. Verse 20. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 20. Bring it out. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. So it's a conversation happening between two heathens. And they're they're looking at us, they're studying us. They like, look, these people, they tough, they strong. Look, but the thing is, this is the secret. This is their kryptonite. You remember Superman? How he was the most powerful thing, but he had a secret weakness, which was kryptonite. That was us. We had a secret weakness. They're like, look, look, these people, if they sin against their God, if they break the laws of God, this shall be their ruin. Not nothing else. That was our kryptonite. That was our one and only weakness. And they knew it. And let us go up, and we shall overcome them. Only if we sin against God, only if we sin against the Most High, did they know that they could overcome us. Because they knew that was the only stipulation to their victory. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, but if they did not sin against this Most High God, if they did not sin, if there was no iniquity, there was no sin, no transgression of the law, what would happen? Let my Lord now. Let the Lord defend them and their God be for them and we become a reproach before all the world. You see that? You, they know that if we kept God's laws to leave us to hell alone because we would easily overcome them. But let me ask you this. 
look at the neighborhood. Who's living over here? Our people, right? It's not a coincidence that all these stores is open. It's not a coincidence they selling damn drugs out of the subway. It's not a coincidence that the drugs and pollution and poverty and crime and murders is surrounded in the black and Hispanic community. Why? In order to keep you in the midst of sin. If they cared about you, why would they be selling drugs over there in that subway? Why do the people who look like you find no issue over with, with poisoning you? Why is that? Where, when is the men of the Lord going to stand up? When is the men of the community going to stand up and say enough is enough? Today is your day that your mind is awoken. You understand? Today is your day. Let me show you something. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me, you got any questions, brother? Oh, no, I only got to commend you, brother. Every time I see y'all, y'all make me get a little bit more faith. And that there's actually black soldiers on the front line that care about the community. Uh, let me show you something because at the end of the day I need you to understand we're not out here for just a motivational speech we're not out here just to have a feel good message we're out here to show you something and how to change let me show you the book of Ezekiel chapter 31 verse 30 also the son of man the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another saying come I you and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. So, brother, you've been listening for quite some time. We're going to show you a set of more laws. Now, the thing is, it's up to you whether you want to change or remain the same. Are you going to change or remain the same? I'm always, I'm always uh, trying to better myself and change. Absolutely. That, matter of fact, look, that's excellent. Let me show you something. Let me get uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Because everything you're saying, is, as far as like the opportunity for you to change and repent, is found in the Bible. That option is given to you. Because the times where you didn't know no better before, right. the Lord showed you mercy in order to reach this point right here. Let me that's show you. Right. The book of Acts chapter 17, verse in the times of this ignorance, God winked at. So the times that you didn't know no better, God winked at me and it didn't put you to death. Like, how old are you, brother? 47. Hey, 47. Age, great, right? Let me show you. The Lord spared you for 47 years. 47 years he spared you. Why? Because he know that you, that you know. He knew that when you heard the laws of God, you going to change, right? right? Let me show you. Why. But now, commanded all men everywhere to repent. So now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So the past times of I didn't know no better, that's done. Because let me ask you, on the Sabbath day, which is today, right now, right. moving forward, are you going to buy, sell, or work on those on this day? No. No. Why? Why won't you? It's a violation of God's commandment. Say it in the mic. It's a violation. It's a violation of God's commandment, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is a violation of God's commandments. And the brother has just increased the knowledge. Let me get it correct the wise man. Proverbs. Because let me show you something. And that show, that right there lets me know that you're a wise man. Because if the scripture says, if you rebuke a fool, he'll hate you for it. But if you correct a wise man, he'll love you for it. So, nah, that's something to drop that. So you show that you're a wise man. And let's now, let's continue in wisdom. I'm going to show you another law, right? So now, let me get the uh, second let me show you another law, right? Because now, you remember, we showed you that you are made in the image of God, right? And let me, and we're going to talk about the image of God and the, the ranking structure of all creation. You got the Most High at the top. You got Christ, the Word, the Creator, the Son of God, and then you got man. You got us, you, and then you got the women and children. Let me show you that in the Bible. The Book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse three. Bring it up. But you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So you have the Most High God, Christ, man, woman. Why is that important? Let me show you. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. What does that mean? Let me get uh, Revelation 19, 13. 19, 13. What does that mean? Every man 
praying and prophesying and hearing the words of prophecy come out and who cover his head dishonors his head. What does that mean? Let me show you something real quick to add to that. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that of the testimony of Jesus worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So this whole Bible is the spirit of prophecy. It's not for the other nations. The blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians are the Israelites. Not the white man, not the, not the Asian man, the black man, Hispanic man, and the native Indian man are the biblical and historical Israelites. Nobody you used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.